Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So it is August 20th today. If you check the news, there's actually a storm hitting Los Angeles. The storm's called Hillary. And that is why the street is relatively empty today because um, the news actually tell us to stay indoors, don't step outside. But because I'm a little bit crazy, I'm gonna do a review of the Xiaomi Mix 4 3 out in public in the middle of a storm. And you're actually watching Mix 4 3 ultra wide camera footage right now and yes i'm using this phone out in drizzling rain i'm not really concerned even though this phone doesn't have ip rating so this review it's gonna be a little bit of like uh like 60 percent review 40 percent and your opinionated rant because i have a lot of things on my mind particularly when it comes to xiaomi products but uh, yeah you're watching ultra wide camera footage let's switch to the main camera footage before i sit down Wow, it's completely empty right now. And you see, I am indeed just using the Mix 4 3 in the rain. That's gonna be one of my rants, actually. I think uh, all the brouhaha about lack of IP rating is a little overblown because the reality is most modern day flagships are like kind of resistant to water damage. Like the IP rating is just a branding. See, I'm using the Mix 4 3 right now. Dude, they took away all the tables and chairs. This is an area usually with a lot of tables and chairs and I would sit here to film my reviews but I guess because they're concerned of the storm because apparently the winds are going to be really crazy so they moved everything indoors I guess. I have no place to sit. Okay so I basically have to sit on the floor because they took away all the tables and chairs. So Xiaomi Mix Fold 3, I've been using this phone for almost exactly one week now and my review, the actual review on this product is going to be relatively short because there's actually not that much to talk about. A lot of the stuff I mentioned in the hands-on still holds true after a week of use. And if you're familiar with Chinese foldables or Xiaomi flagships, you will know that, you know, the screen is awesome. There's very little crease. Maximum brightness is bright enough for outdoor use. The hinge is now very well built. Everything's like rigid and sturdy. And I just used this thing in the rain for about 20 seconds and the phone is still operating fine. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip inside with 12 or 16 gigs of RAM. So performance is absolutely not an issue in terms of raw power anyway. And with the four cameras, including two zoom lenses, this phone has more focal length versatility than any other foldable phone on the market. So overall, you know that at the baseline, this phone is not gonna suck. In fact, I wanna say that this phone's hardware may be the best foldable phone hardware right now with two caveats. First caveat is that this phone doesn't have official IP rating. So if you're someone who still very much care about the IP rating, if you're someone who, you know, work by the water a lot, like let's say you're a lifeguard or you work at a beach resort, then maybe the Fold 5 still make more sense to you because it has official IP rating. But, you know, everybody's usage is different. I am someone who's, I'm not a water person. I'm very rarely out by the beach. So to me, the IP rating doesn't matter because like I said earlier, the reality is all modern day flagship phones have some basic form of waterproofing. So a few years ago when the OnePlus 7 Pro came out, OnePlus did a commercial saying our phone is waterproof. It just doesn't have an official IP rating because we didn't want to pay that European agency. And then after that, a bunch of tech sites including CNET actually did try to dump the OnePlus 7 Pro underwater. And guess what? The phone survived even without an IP rating. The reality is the IP rating, as much as it is about waterproofing, it is also about paying that company a licensing fee to use the branding IP60A or IPX8 or whatever. I don't know how much that company charged, but I'm pretty sure like six figures. And guess what? When Samsung or Apple pay for the IP licensing, they're not like eating the cost themselves. They're just passing the cost onto consumers. That's why the product's a little bit more expensive. And I think Chinese brands have decided that we can get to a lower price point and we skip all these extra, like kind of unnecessary fees. And not everybody's going to agree with that. You know, it's completely fair if you really want that reassurance of the IP rating. But I'm just saying for me, it doesn't really matter, man. I've been using smartphones every single day for like 15 years. I've never like damaged the phone due to water ever. But if it matters to you, fair enough. So that's the first caveat. The second caveat is that the Honor Magic V2, it's thinner than this phone and lighter than this phone. So I may actually prefer that hardware more if I have more chance to test it, but I have not. So even though I made one of the very first videos on the Honor Magic V2, Honor only let me test the phone for about 40 minutes. After that, they took the phone back and I haven't been able to touch the phone since. So to this day, 
I haven't been able to really use the Honor Magic V2, so I can't say whether or not the hardware is better than the Mix Flow 2. I will say that if the Honor Magic V2's cameras are comparable to this phone, then I would prefer the Magic V2's hardware a little bit more. But I think just going by hardware specs, it's unlikely that the Honor Magic V2's cameras will be better than the Xiaomi Mix Flow 3's camera. Particularly the fact that this phone has a periscope zoom lens, whereas the Honor Magic V2 does not have a periscope zoom lens. So anyway, let's talk about the camera performance of the Mix Flow 3. Is this the best foldable phone camera around right now? I want to say yes, but Xiaomi software right now is a little bit inconsistent in that sometimes it will completely blow out photos, like meaning overexposed shots if there's bright lighting. And it's very inconsistent. Like say if I take 10 photos of the exact same scene, two of the shots will be randomly, like inexplicably bright to the point that it doesn't look natural, it doesn't look right. However, I must say that this is only like 5% of the time. The other 95% of the time, the photos captured by this phone looks really good with proper exposure. And the main camera, IMX800, is surprisingly good. This is not a tip-top flagship sensor, but I like the shallow depth of field. And I like that it allows you to digitally crop into a tighter framing, a 2x about 46 millimeter framing. And actually it looks pretty good. Look at these uh, video samples right here. This is shot with the 2x digital zoom of the main camera. But of course, what I love most about this phone is the fact that it has two zoom lenses. The first is a 3.2 times zoom, about 75 millimeter. And the second is a five times periscope zoom at about 120 millimeter. So the reason I like that is because the main cameras of most smartphones are actually too wide. They shoot at about a focal length of 23 millimeter or 25 millimeter. And that's a very unusually wide focal length that professional photographers actually don't like shooting with. For photographers, they will either shoot ultra wide like 16 millimeter or they would rather shoot with 50 millimeter or 35 millimeter or 75 millimeter. 23, 25 millimeter is just that kind of awkward range in that it's a little bit too wide, but then not wide enough for landscape photography. So the problem of the main camera being a little bit too wide is that when you take photos of something up close, whether it's a portrait shot of a human or even of an inanimate object like a laptop, there will be distortion because the lens is wider, it's stretched out. So if you look at these two photos of the laptop right here, the photo on the left is captured with the Mix Flow 3's main camera, 23 millimeter focal length. Look at the laptop, it doesn't look right, right? It looks a little bit distorted, it's a little bit stretched out. But then you look at the photo on the right, this is shot with the telephoto zoom lens, 75 millimeter, and the laptop now looks like a normal shape. And you also notice the background has more compression. It's a little bit um, blurred out, but still closer to the subject, the laptop. Whereas in the main camera, the background has been pushed back as if it's further than it really is. That's distortion. You get that with ultra wide cameras and also the main cameras of most phones because they're too damn wide. So for someone like me who love to shoot portraits and street photography, I actually prefer shooting with the telephoto zoom lens more than the main camera. Now, every flagship phone has a telephoto zoom lens these days, like an iPhone, Samsung, they all have one. But the image sensor in those telephoto zoom lens are a little bit small. So there's a clear quality drop off when you shoot with the three times zoom compared to the main camera of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. What I like that Chinese phones have been doing lately, particularly Xiaomi and Oppo, is that they're putting more attention into the telephoto zoom lens. On the Oppo Find X6 Pro, the telephoto zoom lens has a really large image sensor. I think like one over 1.5 inch. And then on the Xiaomi 13 Pro and 13 Ultra, the telephoto zoom lens also has pretty impressive hardware. Now, I don't know the image sensor of the Mix Flow 3's telephoto zoom lenses. I'm guessing they're quite small, but it is still a better zoom lens than in what's most other foldable phones. So I've been able to capture some pretty nice portraits and three times zoom photos of products with this phone that I wouldn't be able to get with say the Mix Fold 2, which had a pretty weak zoom lens and like the Galaxy Z Fold 5, for example. So overall, I'm very happy with the camera system of the Mix Fold 3. It is the most versatile camera system of all the foldable phones, but I am disappointed by the exposure problems that pop up like 5% of the time, but that's a software issue that Xiaomi could potentially fix down the line. So like I said, overall, I'm very happy with the hardware of the Mix Flow 3. The 4,800 milliamp hour battery in here, it's enough to last a 13 hour day of heavy use. Yesterday, I went out to Long Beach, took the phone with me, 13 hours, 
it lasted, made it to the end of the day with like 6% battery left. It's a little bit tight, but it's enough to last all day, which I can say for a lot of other phones on the market right now. The hinge, like I said, is much improved over the Mix 4 2. It stays in place at any angle. But unfortunately, I'm very, very frustrated with the software because this phone runs the China version of MIUI and it's not optimized for Google Apps. Now you can still install Google Apps on this thing and like 90% of it will run fine. But sometimes there are just little hiccups here and there. Like for example, the Google Calendar will not sync all the time. So sometimes I look at my Google Calendar widget and I know I have upcoming appointments, but it won't show me any. I had to jump into settings, go into account sync, tap the sync button just to sync it again, just to get my Google appointments. And then also, like I said, the, uh, the fact that YouTube does not split screen horizontally, it only splits vertically, so that's annoying. Gboard also does not split in portrait orientation. However, if you rotate the phone to landscape, Gboard will actually split in landscape. So I guess that may be not an uh, optimization issue, but the fact that the screen is not wide enough for Gboard's settings, I don't know, but whatever the case, it's a little bit annoying to not have a split keyboard on a large 8-inch screen. But more damningly, I'm getting that delayed notification issue that I get from some Chinese phone. Now, this is a problem that I have usually been able to fix. In fact, I used the Xiaomi Mix 4 2 last year and I didn't have any issues with that. I was able to fix it for the Oppo Find X6 Pro. Both of those phones I was able to use with no issues. But for some reason, the Mix 4 3 is not working. I've done everything I could. I am still not getting Slack notifications in a timely manner and that's very unfortunate because I use Slack for work. I cannot miss a work notification because I didn't have the app running in the background. It's, it's been really frustrating and it is almost a deal breaker. If I can't find a way to fix this anytime soon, I can't use this phone for the long term because I can't risk missing important notifications. Now, I, I'm complaining about it right now, but I'm trying to gauge how far I should complain because if we take a step back, it's it's a, kind of like an absurd complaint because this is a phone made by a Chinese company for the Chinese market. It is selling only in China. So the fact that I'm complaining, oh, it, it's not optimized for American apps like Slack and Uber. It's kind of maybe a little bit of a first world problem because Slack and Uber are not apps that people in China use. So it's not Xiaomi's problem that those apps are not optimized if the phone is only selling in China. Like put it another way, let's say if a French company made a product that is only selling in France, but that product doesn't play nice with Thailand uh, software. Would it be fair if Thai people start getting mad and start complaining, oh, this French thing that you're selling only in France doesn't work in Thailand? It would be a pretty ridiculous complaint, right? Because you know, the French company didn't make it for you guys. So I guess Xiaomi can say that. Like, we didn't make this phone for people in Europe and America. So don't blame us if your American or European apps do not run well on this phone. So that's one way to look at it. But the other way to look at it is, well, Xiaomi's marketing this phone to a lot of Western people. They're treating this out on Twitter quite a lot. They're seeding review units to English-speaking reviewers like me who use a lot of Google apps. So maybe they could optimize the software before sending it out to Western reviewers. We know that Xiaomi does have a global ROM of MIUI, so maybe port the global ROM version over to this phone before sending it to Android Authority or sending it to me who's based in the US. So I'm kind of torn. Like on one hand, I want to complain, but on the other hand, I feel like maybe I shouldn't complain because this is a Chinese phone made for a Chinese audience in China. So if someone in Texas can't use it, like maybe you can't really complain too much. And this is where I'm going to go into my next rant. So this won't have that much to do with the Mix 4 3 anymore. So if you're bored at this point, you can feel free to turn off the review. But I feel like Xiaomi's been getting a lot of flack from Western, not even Western, from an international audience lately for their product strategy. And I find that they're contradictory. So Xiaomi's been releasing some really cool phones for the China market only, like the Mix 4 3, the Mix 4 2, and the 12S Ultra. And when Xiaomi would do that, a lot of people from Europe or from India, like I know because I see them on Twitter, they will complain. They'll be like, oh, Xiaomi doesn't care about us. Oh, Xiaomi doesn't want to be taken seriously because why are they limiting it to China only? So they complain about that when the phones are not launching outside China. But then later when Xiaomi does launch something outside China, like the 13 Ultra or the 13 Pro, 
it would start complaining about how expensive it is. And the thing is, those phones aren't even that expensive. They're just about the same price as like the iPhone. But they're like, how dare Xiaomi charge the same price as Apple and Samsung? And that's a little bit unfair in my opinion because the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is every bit as good as the S23 Ultra or the 14 Pro Max, if not better. So the reason you think that it's not worth the price of what Samsung and Apple is asking just because you don't have respect for Xiaomi's brand. You think that brand should be below Apple and Samsung. That's your own problem. And I'm just getting a little bit annoyed because I see all the complaints on Twitter. If Xiaomi don't release it outside China, you guys complain. If they release it outside China, but it's like kind of high price, you guys complain. There's basically no win. You guys are entitled. You guys are expecting Xiaomi to give you the best product, but at a value pricing because you guys don't respect the brand the way you do Apple. And by the way, I'm not saying you guys have to pay whatever price Xiaomi is asking. If you think the price is too high, then just ignore it. Ignore the product and just ignore the company going forward. And to give you one more example, I'm gonna use European fashion brands like LV, Prada, or Balenciaga. Like Balenciaga will sell a sneaker that just look like a Nike sneaker, but charge you like $2,000. An LV duffel bag is like $5,000. I think those prices are stupid, but you know what? I just simply ignore those products. Like I don't care about them. I'm never gonna spend money on them. I don't jump into LV's Twitter account and be like, why are you selling this bag for $5,000 when Nike sells it for 2,000? You guys are stupid, you know? That doesn't make sense to me. Just ignore the product if you think they're trying to rip you off. So yeah, there goes my rant. I hope I didn't just offend like 25% of my viewers. But you know, I try to keep it fair and tell it like it is, man. And I'm not just defending Chinese brands because I know some of you guys think that too. If you go back to my history, read my reviews, watch my videos, I defend the LG a lot. I defend the Samsung a lot. And right now I've been defending Apple's iPad Pro too a lot. Like I just, I'm a fan of consumer tech. And when the brand is doing something awesome, I'm willing to pay top dollar for it and, and I'm willing to defend that product. I think a lot of consumers are spoiled and a little bit entitled. So anyway, that's about it for this review of the Xiaomi Mix Phone 3. Unless this phone software gets better or a like global ROM gets ported over, I don't know if I can use this phone full time because of the delayed notification issues. And it's unfortunate because otherwise, I love everything about it. So anyway, that's about it for this review. I hope you enjoyed this video I made out in the storm. I'm kind of sitting on the floor right now because I have no chair to sit. But yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Oh, my leg has a cramp.